I have returned, and with me, I have bought a whole bunch of 3D printed components for my drone frame. Today, I'm gonna to go through the physical assembly of the frame, show off how I could have designed and constructed it, and then also talk through some of the components uh, you use to build a drone, and sort of explain roughly how those work. It's not a full guide to how to make a drone from scratch, but I figured it's kind of an interesting thing to show like the basics you need to basically have a functioning drone. So let's start with the actual frame itself. Now, the frame, as I discussed previously, has this kind of arm design I lifted from the FA50. In fact, the center design as well. Uh, I thought about a few other designs. I did try a, a Y6. I'll put some footage of that failing later in the video here. Um, but in the end, I went with what I thought was a pretty tried and tested design of six radial arms and then two centerpieces uh, that both of those go on to. I will say the individual uh, sort of middle pieces here are not very uh, rigid as it were. I put, uh, you can see here, I've put some uh, sort of extra reinforcement on the bottom of this one to try and make it stronger. But the actual strength comes from the two of them combined. When these two are sealed together, you get a pretty good sort of solid combination, uh, much stronger than some of its parts in that particular case. I've also got some legs, landing legs, I do find important. You can see here, these legs are sort of, again, same kind of design, made out of plastic. Uh, these ones, uh, in fact, are not made out of nylon. So all of this is nylon with glass fiber, um, the strongest filament from the previous video, if you didn't see that one. Uh, these, I don't need to actually be strong, they're just landing legs. Um, they're not taking like huge torsional forces. These are just PETG because it prints nicer. And this stuff is very expensive. So I'm gonna go through the physical assembly first. As you can see here, I've kind of already screwed in the arms to the top section. Uh, there's just a series of very long M3 screws that go through all the way from here down to the bottom. So they will come through, go through this bottom plate and then have a nut on them just to secure them. And then all the different components will either be stuck or zip tied, or in some cases I'll eventually print a frame and screw that down. Um, you can see that I've put a series of holes in the top and bottom here, not just for weight reduction, though of course they do help to reduce the weight. Uh, they're also exactly spaced at one centimeter apart and they are sized to take an M3 screw uh, with a little bit of clearance. It's a 3.4 mil clearance hole. So this is kind of a grid where I can essentially uh, design various different components, cages, other things to screw to it pretty easily and fasten down. But let's get started with the assembly. Now this is done, put that to one side for now. I have to first attach the legs to the base here. So what I did importantly is I made the legs fit this kind of standard screw pattern you see here. So if I go to the uh, close up camera over here, you will see that uh, the legs in fact have two screw holes and two little nubs there. And the idea is that they go in, you can see there, to these two sides. There's two legs that go here and here, and then there's mirrored legs that go in these two holes as well. Basically, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop these in here and then just secure two M3 screws there, through there to get it uh, legs attached. So let's do that. And there we go, legs attached. It's a little bit wobbly, but I reckon with a bit of weight on top, that will fix itself. If not, easy enough to replace. So next step is to add the actual uh, rest of the body to this bottom plate. Now, uh, in many drones, you'll find that a lot of the components are in sort of this cavity between the layers. Um, just because of the way this is kind of annoying to remove the two plates, you could undo, what is it, 12 different screws. Um, I'm actually gonna probably put the battery and most of the wiring down here and then put all the different electronics and things I need to get to more often on top. So obviously this is a very small battery, but batteries and stuff will slide into here. I'll make a little holder that goes uh, sort of, lets the battery sit there, center of vehicle. And then how will the wiring and other things accessible I need to like fiddle with for tuning on top. So uh, with that said, what I've got to do now is screw these through into the base frame and then add some nuts to the bottoms. Let's do that. And 
And there we go, one completed frame assembly. Now to assemble, of course, it's a lot stronger. It's much harder to flex in that direction, as you can see. Uh, the benefits of having the double reinforcement, the layers kind of support each other. Um, so that's a nice bonus. Obviously, as I said in the first video, there's not a lot sort of complicated about drone frames. The key thing is they have space for the propellers and they're stiff. This, I believe, has both of those. Um, so we'll see how stiff it actually is when we test fly it, but to get to test flying it, it needs to have all the right pieces on it to actually fly. So let's talk about some of the individual components that make up a drone. I'll put this to one side while we do that. Now, here on the table, I have a bunch of different pieces and I go through them individually. So we'll start off with the obvious one. Uh, you clearly need motors. Now, motors are very important. They are the thing that makes the drone actually stay in the air. And there are two pieces to the kind of motors you use on drones, brushless motors. Um, this is an outrider motor. That means the bit that spins, it's on the outside. Um, the stator is in a certain place. And brushless motors, uh, all RC brushless motors, I think, um, have three wires coming from them. You can see here, three wires and then they go to this. Now this little thing here is an electronic speed controller. Now what the speed controller does is it basically takes the power, which is sent down these uh, two power wires here, and then regulates it into the right signals to drive the different pieces of the coil on the motor to make it spin. Basically, it does the right pulses and sets the speed. You need one of these, the speed controller, um, they always come with a power inlet. Uh, I have added XT30 plugs to these um, just for ease of playing around with them and it has a, a servo PWM input so you can send it what level of speed it should go or you don't say you the controller so motor and ESCs electronic speed controllers those are very important I have of course six of those we also then have the actual brains of the device the actual flight controller now this is a secondhand cube orange I got for a very decent price off of eBay um, as you see here the cube orange, sort of this bit in the middle contains all the gyros and all the different pieces that basically make the thing fly and stay level. Um, again, multi-rotors are unstable aircraft. They will not fly without a computer sitting there doing tiny adjustments every microsecond. So that's your computer and all the sort of gyros and accelerometers are in the center bit. And then the breakout board, you've got some power inputs, you've got some other inputs. We'll talk about those in a second here. And then at the end here, you've got a series of uh, servo outputs to drive the motors and various other things on the aircraft. So flight controller, of course, also very important. Now, in order to power the whole thing, you need some power stuff. So we have battery. This is a very small battery. You probably would never use this for an actual flight, but for bench testing and making sure things power on, it's very good. Uh, all the batteries I have have these uh, XT60 connectors on them. XT60s are, uh, I don't know, they seem pretty standardized these days in the world of RC hobby stuff, um, but I just find them very useful and relatively easy to solder. Battery goes into a little power unit here. The power unit uh, essentially regulates the power to go to the flight controller. You'll see here, in fact, plugs into one of these power ports on the bottom there. And then for the rest of the power, so this is kind of a pass through, right? The power goes in and then comes out again. And then I have this very poorly soldered uh, split out that takes a single XT60 and then ends up uh, with a bunch of XT30s, six in fact, uh, one for each of the ESCs. And so all you do is you take your battery, your battery goes into the power regulator for the flight controller flight controller plugs into that, then this plugs into the other side of the power regulator, and then your motors plug into those. And that's kind of your power distribution system. If you want to have other things like extra lights or other stuff like that, there's more you can do here. You need to think about a BEC to feed five volts back into the server rails. Not gonna cover that. Far better videos on YouTube of that, I'm sure. Um, but that's kind of the basics of the power and the flight controller. A few other pieces that I think are pretty essential. Um, first of all, uh, a GPS. This is a, I think it's a HERE 3, HERE 3. Um, but basically, your flight controller, they can work with that GPS. They can just try and go off the inertial sensors. They will just sit there drifting and not be entirely sure where they are in that case. So you generally will pair it with a GPS like this. Um, so when you tell it to hover in position, it will hover actually in position rather than just like slowly drifting to one side and hitting a building 
that that kind of thing does happen. Uh, this also happens to have some nice lights on it, so your flight controller can flash lights at you when it's happy or unhappy or very sad, like when it's crashed. I've seen that before. And finally, uh, you need some kind of remote control and guidance. So uh, here I've got a telemetry radio. Normally you'd use a telemetry radio for just sort of remote command and control in terms of autonomy and that kind of stuff. Um, generally you would also have an actual remote controller and the remote controller has its own little thing and that plugs into the flight controller as well. Um, we need at least one radio, obviously, if not multiple. I will have an RC receiver and the telemetry on this drone um, just so I can both set waypoints and monitor status on my laptop and of course change these settings. As you're gonna see, hopefully, uh, making the thing fly is a very careful series of hops, changing some tuning, hopping again, making it tune in the air. So it's good to have telemetry for that and the actual RC controller to do things like, hey, you need to land now and just press down on the sticks. So that's all the pieces. Uh, I'm gonna sort of roughly put them on the drone. Um, what I'm gonna do is start by showing you here just how I'm gonna mount the uh, motors to the arms here, because that's kind of the relevant piece. And then uh, what I'll do is I'll kind of show you where those pieces go. And then next video, we'll actually take the thing for a test flight and see if it actually lifts off of the ground. But first, let's get these motors mounted. So you can see here, the end of the arms, we have the uh, pattern here that's designed to match the screw holes on the bottom. Like every single thing on this drone, these are all M3 screws. And so I can really look at my big bucket of M3 things I have just here to my right. I can pick a screw I believe is the appropriate length and just hold it up here to check. It's a little bit too short. See, that's probably the right length. Let's see, there we go. And so the mounts are made such that this should screw directly in here with almost no problem whatsoever. Let's see. All right, there we go. One motor mounted to the arm. Now, as you can see here, uh, one of the nice things about the arm holes here is that I've got enough space to in fact take the cables and route the ESC under in this little cavity between the reinforcements on the arm. And so uh, from the top, you get this pretty clean look where you can't really see any of the wiring, which is what I do like in, like, you know, yes, it's a handmade drone. Yes, it's 3D printed. It doesn't have to look terrible as a result. And so obviously I'm not gonna sit here and video myself doing all of this stuff. It's gonna take a while. I'm gonna attach the other five motors around the outside, wire them the same way. As I mentioned before, the batteries, bigger ones than this, uh, are gonna go in here. All the main power distribution cabling will go in here as well. Uh, and then also the little power regulator for the actual flight controller. Those all sit in the center layer. Then I will attach the actual flight controller. I'll attach the GPS, probably on the little stand, make it higher here. I will have an RC and a telemetry controller here as well. And then I will just plug the servos into there. So it's not, terribly complicated. Again, I'm not gonna go through the entire thing. Uh, next time I'll show you what it looks like assembled, just so you can see it, but maybe people want, I'll do a full video just with a bench test of how you actually wire this stuff in. Um, but yeah, that's kind of the next steps. And then after that, in theory, in theory, it should fly. What it's actually gonna be is a series of very short hops to make sure the thing's not gonna immediately plummet to its death on one side or break props or anything. So next video will be that. I'll show you the sort of assembled, wired, ready to fly drone in theory. And then we'll do some test flights and we'll make sure that it actually takes off and then show some of the tuning, how to get this thing to actually fly. And fingers crossed, we'll find out whether this frame is rigid enough to have it not oscillate, which is really the actual first time I'll know and that's true. So lots of stuff to come. Uh, I'm gonna go away and start attaching more things and I will see you in the next video.